A Pike County woman mourns the loss of her father after police say her boyfriend stabbed him in a parking lot. And we take you to the West Virginia Capitol where the governor describes how the state will work to fix secondary roads. And some university students are upset the campus is shutting down their free dental services. We have the details. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Taylor Upchurch. Today is Thursday, March 14th. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. Brandon? Good morning, Taylor. Morning. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Like I told you earlier, today I actually just got to wear a dress without putting on leggings, so I'm pretty happy. There you go. <laughs> Lots of warm air this morning, and we're going to see, unfortunately, the chances for some more active weather as we head deeper into the day. So enjoy the morning hours. Enjoy those temperatures because they're mild already. Let's take a look at satellite radar as we head out the door. A wide view this morning because we're showing you what's coming and a line of showers and storms out to the west riding along a cold front. Warm air, though, surging in this morning. Clean sweeps on live pinpoint Doppler radar here in the mountains, but that will change later on. 50s, 60s, and even just a couple of 40s there still showing up across the area. Look out to the state view. Nashville, 68 degrees this morning. Bowling Green at 67. Cooler where the rain is this morning. The outdoor forecast features temperatures climbing into the upper 70s. Yes, you see that right. The upper 70s. Some spots may be closer to 80, but we pay for it later with chances for strong to severe thunderstorms. I'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Taylor. Thank you, Brandon. A Pike County woman mourns the loss of her father, Charles Ratliff, after police say her boyfriend, Michael Gates, stabbed him in a parking lot just off Regina Belcher Highway Tuesday afternoon. I was there as the daughter relived the worst day of her life. It takes only a second for a life to change. Whenever I saw that much blood, I knew that that he was going to die. Beverly Hamilton watched as her dad died in her arms. She says it felt like her boyfriend Michael Gates' personality flipped a switch. They'd argued before, but I never thought I would ever do anything like that. Police say an argument led to Yates stabbing 74-year-old Charles Ratliff Tuesday afternoon along Cox Farm Road. Uh, we know he was stabbed one time. But officers are still waiting for autopsy results. And that will tell uh, if there was other injuries to him or not. Friends and family say what happened in this parking lot could never be explained. And why he done it, only he knows that. I hope he, uh, you know, finds God in her, you know, and I hope he uh, finds peace. I really do. Neighbors in Elkhorn City are shocked a stabbing happened near their hometown. I lost two people that I loved that day. And even though Michael did what he did, I loved him, and I don't know why he did it. Troopers expect the case will be taken to the grand jury within the next week. Officials say Yates is charged with murder and is currently being held in the Pike County Detention Center. The funeral arrangements for Charles Ratliff are not known at this time. And a Lee County man has been sentenced to prison for intent to distribute meth. The Lee County Circuit Court sentenced Don Bolden of Jonesville to six years in prison, followed by 10 years of supervised probation. Bolden was arrested following a traffic stop in December of 2017. Investigators say they found 20 grams of meth, digital scales, and small plastic bags inside the car. And at the West Virginia Capitol, Governor Jim Justice described how the state will work to fix secondary roads. The it's governor crime, says he is going to hire workers and buy equipment to speed up repairs on secondary roads in West Virginia. Justice says the plan will cost hundreds of millions of dollars pulled from revenue surpluses and bond money, but didn't settle on a specific figure or timeline. This plan will make uh, will, will allow us to it says make a dent, but I hope to goodness above we can do a whole lot more than make a dent in fixing our potholes and patching our roads and get our roads back the way that they ought to. The announcement also came with the introduction of the state's new transportation secretary. Bird White replaces Tom Smith. White once ran a country club previously owned by Justice's company. And some Moorhead State University students are upset the campus is shutting down their free dental services starting in June. The free dental clinic was paid for through a grant for several years. But the past two years, MSU has been footing the bill and losing money. 
So the administration has decided to close the dental clinic and put more resources towards mental health. The revenue is just not paying for the service and we've determined that we have a much higher need in mental health and we're going to allocate those resources to hiring more mental health professionals. Upset students are worried about how they will now afford dental care. And in Owsley County, robots in disguise. An embroidery and graphic design store is flourishing. With business all over the county, the business is a true success story. But for its owner, the story was a little different. A couple years back, a deadly car crash almost took her life. Since then, she's had to overcome many obstacles. WYMT's Connor James talked with her about her story. On the outskirts of Boonville, <laughs> this little business does it all. One stop shop kind of thing. <laughs> From embroidery to screen printing, <laughs> yes. it's an around the clock job. <laughs> Sometimes it really is. <laughs> and business is booming. We shipped shirts last year to 46 states. Business here is a family affair. Oh, for it. Laura Thorpe is the owner. And it's always something humorous. <laughs> and Sarah Thorpe. Oh, that's my sister. <laughs> is her sister. But this family yeah. is just thankful they're still together. Yes. Yeah. Back in 2015, Laura was severely injured in a deadly crash. Um, traveling down the road just like any other morning, and um, so there was a car coming. I saw him, but um, he ha actually had a heart attack at the wheel and came across the center line and hit me head on. The man in the other car, a family friend, died. Sarah remembers the day vividly. She was in critical condition. Like, we didn't know if she was going to live or die. Uh, so I was in the hospital first. 10 days or something. I had several major surgeries. It's a very devastating time. Thankfully, Laura survived, but bones throughout her body were shattered. Uh, so after that, I was bed bound for about four months. I mean, her hips, her legs, everything was busted up from her head to her toe, basically. My legs and stuff were kind of broken up, and uh, but I'm much better now. I, I walk and, and do things. Um, but it's one of those things that you know that there's a purpose. A purpose. That's what this shop has become to her. Let me get let me get my program pulled up here. She struggled to slowly regain her ability to walk. I wanted to give up, you know, um, but I know who I put my trust in, and, and that's God. And now she's using that purpose. You know, we just want to promote a little piece of Boonville all over. Uh, which is what we're doing, and I hope we're promoting a positive piece as we do that. So To try and uplift the area, yes, she calls home. Such a sweet story. We have more information about the robots in disguise on our website, WYMT.com. Just look for the story. And last night was a late night for lawmakers in Frankfurt. They will meet two more times before the end of this legislative session but they still have a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. Lawmakers passed House Bill 354, a tax cleanup bill. Two bills teachers are watching closely do not look to be going anywhere. This includes Bill 525, dealing with teachers' retirement board. Well, I believe 525 is dead. Uh, again, I've been around this process a long time. Uh, you know, like Lazarus, things can come back to life. House Bill 205, dealing with private school scholarship tax credits, also look le looks like it may have to wait until next session. And the United States is finally joining more than 40 other countries in grounding Boeing's 737 MAX 8 plane. Some passengers who fly American, Southwest, or United may be seeing delays over the next few days while the airlines swap out the six dozen planes in use here in the U.S. Despite some cancellations and delays, travelers were mostly pleased with the decision. If there's any fear of, you know, a malfunction or a problem, like, you got to do safety first. I don't care how late I'm going to be as long as I get there. Boeing says it has full confidence in the safety of the 737 MAX, but supported the grounding out of an abundance of caution. And the Senate is set to vote on a resolution that disapproves of President Trump's national emergency declaration. Some members of the GOP don't see eye to eye with the president. Republican Senator Mike Lee tried to float legislation to restrict future declarations, but that effort failed to win Trump's approval. Approval. Congress has voluntarily relinquished, almost willfully relinquished its power, uh, transferring a whole lot of that power in uh, war making. Uh, uh, rulemaking, trade powers, and uh, emergency powers, all kinds of other things. 
President Trump has not yet issued a veto during his tenure. If he ends up vetoing this measure, lawmakers will most likely not get enough votes to override it. And Paul Manafort will be serving more time in prison. A federal judge in Washington ordered Manafort to serve an additional 43 months in prison on charges of conspiracy and witness tampering. Those charges are in connection to his work lobbying for politicians in Ukraine. The sentence is on top of the 47-month sentence he received in federal court in Virginia last week. And now it's time to check in with Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning. Brandon, how does it look out there today? So far, so good, as we've mentioned throughout the morning. But again, we're watching what's off to our west right now. Central Kentucky starting to kind of see the leading edge back up towards Cincinnati over toward Louisville. But here in the mountains, still fairly quiet. Six hour loop gives you a better idea. Most of it pulling off to the north of us for now, but that's going to continue its trend eastward as we head deeper in the day. Clouds kind of ebbing and flowing. So maybe some early sunshine this morning. Look at the winds, though, cranking already. Bowling Green, Nashville, both at 24. Lexington as well. Somerset seeing a 12 mile uh, wind speed this morning as well and temperatures out to the west seeing 60s and close to 70 already 40s to 60s here across the mountains. We take a look at the 12 hour planner and you see we get close to 80 today and those chances for showers and storms increase as we head deeper into the nighttime hours. Taylor. We will have stories trending on WYMT.com next. Thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. And if you plan on going to the SEC tournament to watch Kentucky play, we have important information on safety policies you need to know before you go. And yesterday was a big day for girls basketball in the state of Kentucky where history was made at the opening of the Sweet 16 tournament. 